This is Jocko Podcast number 104 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. We're going to go right into Q&A. Cool. I don't think there's anything to discuss. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it then. It's Q&A. It's Q&A time. All right. Question number one. You discuss leading and maneuvering up and down the chain of command. But what about laterally within your own peer group where the competition for advancement is fiercest and your ability to set team objectives and implement some of the tools you discuss is limited? Okay. So you, you absolutely do have to lead laterally amongst your peers. And since you don't have rank or position, you have to do it another way. But wait a second. Since you shouldn't use rank or position to lead people below you in the chain of command, and since you don't want to be led by someone that's throwing their rank and position around, then guess what? You need to do the same type of leadership that you would use up and down the chain of command to lead your peers. So what does that mean? That means you help them when you can. <laughs> you support what they're doing. You try and build a relationship with them. That's what you try and do. Now this this part of this that we're, we're talking about, the competitiveness, like if they want to maneuver and try and make you look bad and jump in the spotlight and try and get all the credit, guess what? It's fine. Mm. That's fine. Let them do it. And, and everyone is gonna see what they're doing. And they might not see it immediately, but they will eventually be found out. So do your best to support them. Do your best to help them. Do your best to build the relationship. Make the mission the most important thing, not the little politics that you're about to dive into and get involved in. Don't make that the primary thing. Make the primary thing accomplishing the mission. Think about this. If you start fighting with them, you're expending energy on fighting your own team. That's what you're doing. Instead of fighting the enemy. It's, this is a blue on blue situation. This is friendly fire, it's fratricide. Don't do that. Disengage from the friendly fire and focus on how to make the team win. Mm. Take the high ground. Take the high ground or the high ground will take you. Yeah. Okay. Another one of those points that we always say, I know I do, and I always think this where people are watching man mm. they see that they see that they see all that stuff Let, let's play this game too you know the game where i play where like who would you hire who, yeah. who would you rather yeah, yeah, yeah. have working for you who yeah. would you rather have working for you yeah. the guy the guy oh you got four guys one guy is helping the other guys out trying to help them with their mission one guy the other end of the spectrum is undermining people and trying to make himself look good which guy are you going to promote yeah all day long you know who you're going to promote yeah you're going to promote the guy that's trying to help the team win and not just look out for himself. Yep. Yeah, fully. And then That's it. And consider that with not just your boss but like your peers as well. You know, even if there's competition, let's say there's everyone's competing. Well, right? yeah. And you're the guy who's jumping in the spotlight, always whatever versus the other guy who's always helping everyone. Right? Even the, even if they're competing with you, for sure. the guy who's jumping in the spotlight, he's going to get ostracized if anything he is you know so man yeah they, they see that stuff man that goes socially too. you know what now 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 answer me this <laughs> when someone sees the world this way that means they have a tendency to think that way that means they might have a tendency to act this way to so they gotta be way, especially yeah, yeah. cautious yeah, sure. if you're looking at everyone like well I'm trying to compete with that guy and if right. I might be getting screwed over if I don't if if I let him yeah. you know get the spotlight right now if that's the way you're thinking that's the way you're acting and if you're acting that way everybody can see it yeah so don't act that way don't act that way be a good team member yeah the enemy is outside the wire yeah that's a good one too where the good news about that is like let's say you are acting that way as long as you can admit it to yourself even if you do have those feelings inside but you're like hey i don't want to act like that right. and you start act, even if you know it's kind of against your feelings and then you start acting that way slowly and slowly your feelings kind of accommodate where you don't feel that way anymore you'll start to feel yes, that way you'll less start and less. to realize how you should act as a human being yeah. as a team member yeah. as a leader as a follower yeah. yeah you'll grow up you'll mature you'll be a good person yeah Feel the benefits. As opposed to just looking out for yourself and screwing over the other team. Yeah. The one's against me. Check. Kill or be killed. Next question. My jujitsu school is small and I'm a white belt under three months. And there are typically two or three blues and maybe a purple belt in the class with us. 
When I train or spar with the blue and purple belts, I can win the advantage or submit them more than half the time. They don't like me because of this. I like what my instructor is teaching, but I feel I need more of a challenge. Should I find more a more competitive school? Your time is appreciated. Okay, so there's something very sus- suspect going on yeah. here. Uh, there's something wrong with the school if you are a white belt that can submit blues and purples. And I don't know what yeah, this, maybe time. maybe if you're 500 pounds or just a super athlete, but yeah. if you're a normal person, even if you wrestled in high school, maybe even if you wrestled in college, mm-hmm. and you you've been training jujitsu for three months, you should not be submitting purple belts. That should not be happening. There's yeah. there's now there is a small chance, a tiny tiny chance, mm-hmm. that they're just being like so super cool. <laughs> that they're letting that like they're saying, oh yeah, you know, oh that was good, you know, you caught me my arm, and they're just giving it, and you're just too dumb to realize that. Mm. But since you're saying that they don't like you because you're submitting them, mm. that that that's very unlikely that they're just super nice. So uh, I think you may actually be in a fraudulent situation where the school is not a proper school, and I haven't heard one of these in a while. Yeah. But you, a white belt, should not be on the regular yeah. submitting a blue belt and definitely a purple belt yeah. or any purple belts. Yeah. If there's a massive size differential, it'd be an occasional occurrence, yeah. but on the regular, it shouldn't be happening. Yeah. Right? Cor- correct. The, yeah, I mean, unless, again, like there's maybe, and maybe it's a small school, you know, there's, you know, a few people, maybe like some real old people or something like that. Maybe this guy, I don't know how big he is, yeah. or anything, but let's say he was two. I'm, I'm getting real specific here. Right. What if he's 225, mm-hmm. solid, mm-hmm. six, two, mm-hmm. may or may not have been a college wrestler. Okay. Learned. A few chokes, guillotine, yeah. um, you okay. know, head and arm, yeah, uh, an yeah, arm yeah, bar, yeah, you know, yeah. guys pick so up So he's 225 arm. college wrestler, 6'2", yeah. and he knows basic submissions. That, that, that could be problematic. And yeah. then the rest of the people, it, it there's maybe like a 65-year-old, yeah. 135, 145 pounds, yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. you know. If there's no extreme um, disparity between you and the other students, yeah. we have a problem. Yeah. If there's an extreme disparity, even then you should go look around because even if you're even if you're 225 pounds, six foot two, wrestled in college, most purple belts should be able to handle you if you've only been training for two months. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Even three. Man, I was and not to say my situation. So here's proof. I'm not saying that, but just an example. I was two. When I started, I was 225. I'd say when I really settled into it, I lost. I got down to about 215, 220. Um, and I was white belt over three months, by the way. Mm. And I rolled with this guy. George was his name. You might remember him. Small, teeny guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, yeah. six. Yeah, no, George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple belt. And no chance I had with this guy. Yeah. And I was, this is more than three months, by the way. Yeah. This is after I started competing no, and everything. George was good, too. Yeah, purple belt. Yeah. He's the one who taught me For butterfly sure. guard, by the way. For him sure. Him and Jimmy. Yeah. But yeah, no chance. A oh, purple belt like him, you have no chance against. Yeah, but this is not a big guy. This is a guy you know, who's about 5'6". Not, you know. I think he might be smaller than 5'6". Yeah, he's a small, small guy. And light. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a great example. Yeah. That's a great example. I'm trying to think. I mean, when I started jujitsu. I was 215 pounds. Oh, I was bigger than you. 215 pounds. And Dean Mm -hmm. was a blue belt. Just got his blue belt. Yeah. And I had no chance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he, and oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, Dean weighed 174 pounds. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's very similar. Yeah. You'd have to, like, yeah, the disparity between the yeah. two would, would have to be a lot, a lot. So, I don't know. I, so what do you think it is then? Uh, I think, think like, it, it might be a fraudulent school. Like how? Like what? The, uh, the well, instructor, he, the instructor's not a real black belt. The instructor mm-hmm. knows he's watched enough YouTube to show an arm lock and he can actually do it on the purple belt because he he's, he's right. bigger and stronger or something. Yeah. And he knows it a, a little bit better because let's face right. it, if you, if, if you're a, if you watched YouTube and you studied as hard as I could, as you could, and you owned yeah. a school yeah. and you trained all the time, yeah. you could be a blue belt level, yeah, and true. then you can beat 
the other blue belts that you taught. Yeah. And then gave the blue belt because you gave yourself a black belt. That's probably what's going on. Yeah. That's crazy. Huh? Whoever this is, uh, hit me up again and tell me what your school is yeah. on Facebook. Or yeah. Whatever this question. Came once from. you do that, and once you, you know, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, is that a, is that like a, is that a hard move to be like, hey, this is my school, and put it out there, you know? And here's my instructor. I mean, on one hand, I'm, you want to think if the instructor is legit, no, no, no. Well, that's no what problem. I would want to know. I'd, I'd want if the if the guy wasn't legit. I don't know what I do. I don't have a plan for that. But if the guy was legit, I'd come back on here and say, oh, here's the situation. Yeah. We found out that this is what's going on. Yeah. You are a 6'2", 285-pound <laughs> collegiate yeah. NCAA champion wrestler, yeah. and you studied Sambo or Judo. Like if somebody yeah, had yeah. Sambo or Judo under their belt. Yep, it's true. But you wouldn't even be asking this question if you had that under your belt because you'd know the answer. Yeah, right? that's true too. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, I think uh, yeah, the chance of that is is fair. It's a fair chance. Fraudulent situation. I haven't, haven't seen too many of those lately. Yeah, because that's a rare thing. Yeah, the I internet mean, even, can mop those up now. Yeah, there used to be all kinds of fraudulent schools. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, think about it. The internet is all over everything. Oh yeah, you get even a halfway fraudulent person. Yeah, it's like okay, is this guy fraudulent? You know what I mean? It's like man, you're really held to the coals. So I don't know. Maybe chew it up. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, should we have some kind of thing on our website where we have, if you're a legit school, like a Jocko approved school? In theory. Because how many times a day do you get asked, I live in Tennessee, where should I train? I live in Chicago, where should I train? How many times do you get asked that a day? Half. So every other day is is that about average. Oh, really? Okay. I get asked more than that. I get asked a lot. Yeah. More than you. Maybe yeah. not tons more, but definitely I get asked repeatedly. Yeah. Where should I train? I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Where should I train? I live in wherever, Concord, yeah. New Hampshire. Where do I where, where should I train? I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. You know what I mean? People yeah. are always asking well, that. Yeah, the only risk with that is like, okay, so first off, we don't know all the schools. We probably no. don't even know half the schools. Yeah. And just because so, you say you're under Hickson, it doesn't mean you're legit. You know, so yeah, it's like, there's a lot yeah, to so that. So we'd have to have some sort of an approval process. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the day, let's say you approve, I don't know. It, cause Someplace you, and then it, then something Yeah, people bad will see there. it. Or no, no, no. Or people will be like, okay, here's the page or the website or whatever. They'll be like, okay, this school that I'm like looking at, I like it, but it's not on the, this oh, list. But yeah, the, yeah. I don't know. We didn't get to it kind of thing. And then yeah. it gets kind of like the ding, you know? In yeah. that way, I don't it know. shouldn't be that much of a problem, by the way. There's not that many fraudulent schools. We're talking about one right now, possibly, but there's not many out there. Although there no. are some. Yeah, they're it's, like they're in strip malls. You drive by like a strip mall and you see something that says jujitsu. I mean, no, the, now there's the legit thing. schools in yeah. strip malls too. Comprito's, that's true. Comprito school oh, in yeah. strip mall, and he's as legit as he he's gets. As legit so as they it's, get. it's hard, you Comprich. know. Comprich. Comprich. I don't know, but yeah, the. There's a, actually more strip influence. malls is actually the normal place for jiu-jitsu schools now that I think about it. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of crazy the normal place. Yeah. yeah. His one is straight up in the mall. Oh, in a, that's not a strip mall, then a mall. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a cool. mall mall. I'm going to have to go visit Comprido. Yeah. So if you watch that video I did with him for Metamorphs a long mm-hmm. time ago, it's like he'll, I, don't know, I forget if it was in the outtakes or not, but there's this cool. Ch- you know those trains that go around yeah. the mall for the kids? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I hate the choo choo train because it always comes to, uh, by my academy. Anyway. That's funny, Cause especially because Comprito's such a nice guy. You figured he'd be like, I love that choo choo train. Even, that's exactly how he said it. That's how he sounded, but he says, I hate it. Meanwhile, he's smiling and yeah. laughing. It's very interesting. Dichotomy. Cool. Anyway, yeah, more information needed on this academy. Next question. I am seen at work as a very assertive and aggressive dude. And I seem to rub people the wrong way. When they think I'm upset or frustrated at problems they they present, which is... Rarely the case. I'm just so fired up. <laughs> How do I work on my tact while still being assertive with my team? You know what? I'm fired up too. Sure. How you like that? Take it. And w- when I was young, I, I this is when I was young. Sure, I rubbed some people the wrong way. I know that. Mm-hmm. Even when I was a young kid working on a construction site, guess what I was doing? Working too hard, <laughs> making people rubbing people the uh, wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got to the team. There was a little crew of us that were too hardcore. We were too fired up. We were, I would run the O course with my, with with a rucksack with a 40 pound pack, uh, 40 pound sandbag in it. No one was doing that. Like everyone does it now, but back then, 
There was a small crew of us that were doing it, mm -hmm. running with jungle boots all the time instead of in sneakers. And I literally got pulled aside by some of the old guys. And by old guys, I don't mean nom. I mean old guys from wherever, uh, you know, from the from the nineties sure. or the late eighties. And you know, I'd get the hey, you just need to calm down, dude. Yeah, you know, you don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, maybe I rode those guys a little bit the wrong way. Understandable. Mm -hmm. But when I got a little older and a little bit more mature, I got fired up to actually do a good job as a leader, to actually build relationships with my platoon mates. And I got fired up for people to, instead of thinking that I was upset or frustrated, my, what I was fired up is I wanted people to think that I was calm and cool and collected. Right. Mm -hmm. So how's that for do totally different? It's like when we say default aggressive. Yeah, and I, I always say, hey, you're not being aggressive. This isn't being aggressive towards your people. It's not yelling. It's being aggressive towards your mission. I was, I'm aggressive towards making people think that I'm not upset mm -hmm. and that no matter what's going on, that they just go, man, Jocko, he's not going to lose his temper. He's super level headed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. um, now, now that being said, that doesn't mean that I was passive. Sure. That doesn't mean that I wasn't assertive. It means that I was aggressive and assertive, but I did it with tact, and instead of coming at people straight on, I flanked them. I have listened to their little ideas, or I made their ideas come from me, but they didn't know it. I listened to their solutions. I helped and supported. Well, how, you go so far just by helping people out and helping them with their idea instead of trying to control them and make everything your idea. So that's my advice here, relax. Calm down, focus, get fired up, get aggressive about being tactful, get aggressive about working with people, get aggressive about showing your calmness. That's what you get aggressive about. Yeah. Don't get assertive, aggressive, and create antagonistic relationships across your company. Yeah. Check? Yeah. Sounds good. He said he, he gets, or they think he gets upset or frustrated at problems that they present, Yeah, which yeah. is rarely the case, he said. He said, I'm just fired up. So it's it's it seems like, and I'm no expert, but I'm trying to put myself in this position where, like, I think maybe, like, it it's just a presentation thing. You know, like, his, well, his, yeah, his definitely is a presentation thing. is aggressive. Like, he's saying he's not even getting frustrated. No. He's, I'm getting frustrated with him for, for acting this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, aggressive like sure. a mindset, it's, yeah. It's, it's not like necessarily it's a physically. Definitely a, it's definitely a presentation thing, no doubt about it. Yeah. But So that means you say, okay, I'm presenting the wrong thing. Yeah. I will fix what I'm presenting. Yeah. It, do, you, do you think, actually, I think you do think this or know this or whatever. Oh, you know how people, they'll they'll get nuts or whatever they'll 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 uh, be aggressive they get fired up mm -hmm. right and you know they'll whether it be they'll lose their temper or they're behaving right, right. in a way that's that's aggressive towards people and their justification is not to say that this guy does this i don't know but i'm just saying their justification is i'm just passionate yeah. about it i'm just whatever you know yeah um is that that's just a justification right it is because yeah yeah like if at it's, the end of the day it is it's a ju it's a justification it is also a reality so think about it from the other perspective if if you're dealing with someone if you have someone on your team yeah. that gets all that they're they're passionate about something and it can be problematic if they don't learn to control their passions right because yeah. they just get hey we're gonna make this happen and they make bad decisions because they're so passionate about making something happen that they're not, they're not doing something logical. Yeah. So yes, you could say it's just an excuse and there's no such thing as a passionate person, but that actually wouldn't be true. It's not an excuse, it's a real thing. Now, if you are aware of that, then why do you keep acting that way? You yeah. gotta put your passions yeah. into check, that's yes. what you gotta do. 100%, yeah, and, and I meant more like it's an excuse for their behavior. You know, like to me, I. Personally, I think that being passionate about something that you're into is good, way beneficial. Of course. But again, you know how to say, like, there's a difference between what you feel and how you behave, you know? So if you're if you're super passionate about something, it doesn't justify like all this irrational or emotional or like loss of temper situation behavior. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, be passionate. 
but don't behave in some crazy off the handle way agree so i think that they use their passion as an excuse for their behavior i just got a quick temper man yeah, 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 no, that yeah. That doesn't mean that you can act like an well, idiot. Well, that's worse. That's well, yeah, that's but it's a the double. Same, it's the same, same thing. Deal, yeah, same yeah. thing. Exactly right. Yeah, that's just who I am. I'm unique in that way. Next question. My wife told me that she thinks our 11 year old daughter is being bullied emotionally by some girls at school. As I drove into work, I wondered if jujitsu would give her some tools to help her deal with emotional stress and or bullying that might be taking place. I think we all know the answer that Jocko will give to this question. Absolutely, jiu-jitsu will help. 11 years old is a perfect age for getting in there, and you will learn to, she will learn to defend herself for real in physical confrontations, which will give her real confrontation, which will give her confidence, because let's face it, emotional and verbal bullying is absolutely backed up by a either clear, message of possible violence or a subliminal message of possible violence mm-hmm. right i mean a big gr- a girl that's getting picked on the 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 underlying message is there the implied message is there that it's it could go physical if it had to mm-hmm. and when that gets removed because the you, the daughter knows how to now fight and defend herself that starts to impact these emotional bullies as well mm-hmm. so yes absolutely get her training i would throw some boxing in there too just because that is a pretty empowering thing you're punching something that feels good and you, you know what while we're at it let's get some working out going on right get a pull-up bar get away the warrior kid no, no kidding yeah. get, get absolutely get her way the warrior kid don't baby her too much yeah you got to be careful of that because she's your daughter and you say oh you know it's so horrible and these girls are picking at you don't don't do that because guess what she's gonna be dealing with this her whole life you're gonna be get there's always bullies in every environment in the in school environment in the work environment in everywhere there's bullies mm-hmm. and she's gonna have to deal with them so don't don't baby her where she thinks that you're the one that's gonna save her from it um and I also think she should know that everyone gets bullied. Mm. I got asked that when Way the Warrior Kid came out. Mm. Someone said, well, did you get bullied? And they think, of course, I would never get bullied because I, I'm a big dude. Well, guess what? When I was nine years old, I was a scrawny little nine-year-old kid. And everybody that was 11 was bigger than me and stronger than me. Yeah. And then when I was 11, everyone that was 13 was bigger than me than stronger than me. Yeah, yeah. And when I was... 14 everyone that was 16 was bigger than me and stronger than me so mm-hmm. so you we, no matter who you are as a kid there's always somebody that's bigger and stronger than you that's going to bully you yeah. if they're a jerk mm-hmm. so i think she should understand that she's getting bullied right now but that's that happens to people and people get over it and get through it and i i, I do think you have to be when you say that you can't leave the impre- you can't overwhelm her mm-hmm. and, and say everyone gets bullied and you're gonna always get bullied in the office. All you know what I mean? Yeah, like I'm not yeah, saying yeah. to overwhelm her. I yes, think yes. that's just like there's a there's a lot. Did you ever see the movie The Professional? Which one was it? The Sylvester. French guy. Oh yeah, yeah. And Leon. Yeah, there's a great scene in that movie where the girl is there's like a crazy fight going on between her parents in the apartment. They're yelling at each other. They're screaming. They're slapping people. The domestic violence is going on, and she comes out and she's sitting in the hallway, yeah. and she's crying, and the assassin guy kind of walks up the stairs and and she looks and he looks at her and she looks at him and and she says is life always like this or does it get better when you get older and he looks at her and says always like this yeah (laughs) so you got to be careful that that's not the message that you're sending now there's some reality to that statement like yeah guess what life is always going to be hard and you do want to give your kids enough exposure to the hard things so that they're not weak yeah and they don't they don't go into panic mode when something tough enters their world so yeah. that's why things like jujitsu and working out are good and exposing them and letting them experience some hard things but again you just don't want to overwhelm her and yeah. that's that and by the way you might as well start training jujitsu too yeah. their dad Reap get get mom in there too. Yeah, now you got a little <laughs> excuse to get down in that gym, get yeah. your jujitsu on. 
Mm-hmm. And I know that you don't train jujitsu because if you did, you wouldn't be asking this question. You'd yeah. be in getting getting her training. Yeah, yeah. You making that happen? So you emotionally bullied, right? So this is interesting. She's in the new Warrior Kid book. The bully, there's a bully in there, but he's not a bully like Kenny Williamson, right. who's a big, strong bully. Yeah. He's a bully that's an emotional bully. He kind of is. He, and every time there seems like there's going to be a confrontation, he finds a way to weasel out of it. Yeah. You know, so he'll harass people, but then he'll yeah. get out of it. Harass yeah. people. He knows perfectly how to push the buttons. That's what Mark's dealing with, this kid yeah. named Nathan James. <laughs> Sounds vaguely familiar. Nathan James causes problems. Yeah, there's some layers in that name for sure. That I. So this this makes a lot of sense to me because I have a daughter, four and a half by the way, goes to pre K. It's like preschool. Pre K is that the jujitsu school she goes to? No, <laughs> no, bro. Anyway, so Who's she the instructor. <laughs> she told me one day, um, she said that her friends. I'm not gonna say their name. Doesn't matter. Um, she said this friend told me. That she's not my friend, she's only this other girl's friend. Mm-hmm. Right? That's emotional. That's emotional bullying mm-hmm. right there. Right for the four and a half year old version of yeah, it. Yeah, I guess by the so. Way. So it gets way worse at eleven, by the way, yeah. and then probably way worse at yeah fifteen, sixteen. It's just my assumption. So what I told her, not to say this is the right answer, but maybe it's something yeah. to think about. So my daughter d- d- does jujitsu, has done jujitsu, double um, leg. Choke. Well, I like it. Well, <laughs> that's what you want to say. Be like, oh, you'd smash the and she's bigger too. She's oh. bigger than than everyone in her oh, so class. So she's gonna by be the way. bully. No, no. All right. So what was you, what'd you tell her? My daughter's trained to be a nice girl. Okay. So I always have this underlying thing. No matter if someone be's mean to you, that doesn't mean you be mean to them. That makes you a mean person. I said mean people will be mean to other people. Nice people tend to not be mean to other people. Right. That's really real basic that's stuff. Fundamental. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. But she's four. Yeah. Um, so you just keep reminding her. So um, so I I told her, hey, look, if she doesn't want to be your friend, then she's not your friend. And that's OK. Does that mean you be mean to her? No. But at the end of the day, she I said, are you stronger than her? And she said, yeah. I said, are you smarter than her? She said, yeah. I don't know if she is or isn't. Here's the thing. It's a self-empowering thing, mm. just like how you said, where she knows jujitsu, she's smarter, she's stronger, she can do more pull-ups, she can do more burpees and stuff like that. All this stuff, it starts to form in her head. Hopefully, this is the goal. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll form in her head that if they don't want to be my friend, that's okay. That's, that's okay. no loss to me. Maybe if someone who is strong like me, smart like me, and whatever like me didn't want to make okay maybe that's something but this isn't the case you know it's kind yeah. of that idea i think that's good advice i think it, the 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 thing of just saying oh yeah that's okay not everyone's gonna want to be your friend that's yeah. okay yeah and some people are gonna like you and some people aren't gonna like you that's okay you yeah. just be nice to everyone that's fine yeah i gotta ask that question when we did the one warrior kid podcast a bunch of people asked oh my i feel like people don't want to hang around with me and i was yeah that's okay yeah. That's okay. You don't need to hang around with people all the time. I don't. I don't like even like hanging around with people. I yeah. didn't say that because I don't want to turn everyone into <laughs> antisocial person like uh, me. But uh. <laughs> yeah, that makes it. And that thing, or I think you just said it. Where because my daughter always asks, you know, did people not want to be your friend, or um, would she like bump her head mm. real hard? She'd be like, did you used to bump your head when you were little? Mm. You know, she always wants to she know, wants like, to know am that. I alone yeah, in this yeah, whole yeah. whole deal? Yeah. And Man, it seems like it really helps when I say, no, I used to all the time. I show her like my scars and stuff like that. And she'll be like, oh, and you can tell she feels better about feels it. Better. Yeah, you know? That's pretty cool. It's weird. I think that would help with the bullying thing. And too. and it's good. Your daughter's smart. And so she has the capability of formulating that question. I bet a lot of kids might not be able to even say, hey, did you bump your head too? Right. Whereas a parent, if you just recognize that they probably feel alone. And yeah. so if you say, oh, I know you bumped your head. I used to bump my head too. One time, look, I got a yeah. scar on my head. It happened yeah. to me too. So they don't make your kids beg for a partner in the world. Give it to them. Yeah. Follow the Echo yeah. Charles model of parenting. And that makes sense, too, now that I'm thinking of it. Because, like, even as an adult... Okay, so you got a kid, and they're like, Hey, did you... I don't know. Did you bump your head like this and get blood on your head or whatever when you are little? And you're like, you're like, yeah. And if you add this, and this is how I dealt with it, right? Because a lot of times, like... Mm. You give them a little path. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. So, you, you got, you know, you got this poor little kid. 
they bumped their head and it's like dang i don't even i've never felt this before there's a lot of pain there's blood oh that's scary i don't know really how to deal with it right so of course you go to your dad and then your dad's like yeah hey yeah i've done it this is how i did it this is how i dealt with it and she's like okay maybe i can deal with that and even adult because adults we do that too you know like dang i'm getting i don't know audited yeah i'm getting audited the first time whatever Jocko, hey, you know, or, or you know, your yeah. friend or whatever is like, hey, I, I got audited, and this is yeah. what you can Here's expect. Yeah. This is like how you deal with it, and all this stuff. And boom, you feel better about it. Indeed. And more empowered. And that's on top of the jujitsu. <laughs> if I got audited, I would way rather know jujitsu than not, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Jack. Next question. I've got a leadership situation I need help with. I was promoted to a troop commander position over a fellow team leader who now reports to me. He has many years of experience and a lot of knowledge. He's very he's very bitter and not getting the promotion at not getting the promotion and is letting me know when I include him in decision making for the troop or try to tap into his knowledge and experience. He he shuts down, refuses to give input and says that I should already have the answers since I'm the troop commander. I know the troop would benefit from his input and team dynamics would be much improved. If it wasn't so negative, I've tried to let him know that I value, I value his experience. I feel that his input would be beneficial and that his negative attitude and bearing and bearing are not acceptable. It is making him very ineffective team leader. I'm, I'm failing at getting through to him and I don't want, I don't want to fire him for his position. How can I get him to value his own position in the troop and become effective again? Okay, I, I, I actually think you're doing the right thing, and you've opened the door for him, so I think that's a good first initial approach, uh, but obviously doesn't seem to be working. Now, a couple different courses of actions you could take. One of the things you could do is actually give him some higher responsibility, right? Mm. Give him, put his team in charge, put him in charge, the whole team sometimes. Maybe he will step up and start to lead and see that He's now able to prove and that you have a lot of trust in him and all that stuff. There's also a chance. Think about this. There's also a chance that you might be coming off as condescending to him. So imagine this. Hey, Echo, I, I value your experience. Oh, no. Right? And, you know, the, the troop would really benefit from your input. It's right. it's like you're treating him like it's key, he's a kid and he's getting that. Those can come off as condescending. So we have to put those a little bit in check as well. And I think those are a little bit. You know, you put to put the person in charge, you try that, you've opened up to try and get their input and get them involved, but it's it might be coming it might be coming across as condescending. Even if it's even if you're doing it, even if you're just saying, Hey man, could really use your input on this thing, it'd be great. Even if you're doing it in like a cool way, in your mind you might be hearing Oh, I could really use your yeah. help. Like, so, yeah. so even if you're saying it in a perfect way, it still might be hitting his ears in a different way. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, at this point, I think what I would do is I would maybe just back off. I would just go forward, uh, treating him like one of the leaders and expect him to perform as you expect your leaders to perform. I think you've made the effort. It didn't really work. And now you have a job to do and you got to get on with it. Hmm. it there's also, um, you know, the world doesn't revolve around his pouting and his being negative. And, and you you can't let that happen. Now, on top of that, this guy's a powder and he's a negative guy. That's probably the reason he didn't get selected to be promoted. Oh, what yeah. we talked about earlier, the boss saw that. He yeah. saw something along the way where things didn't go his way and he and he pouted and was negative and that's why he didn't get promoted. Meanwhile, the guy that did get promoted when things didn't go his way, he's like, okay, cool, we'll, we'll drive on with what the new plan is. Yeah. And that's why you got promoted. <laughs> so I would say move on, do your job, treat him like you would treat one of your leaders. I, be very careful that you don't overcorrect. Because you hear me say like, okay, I'm gonna treat him normal, and now all of a sudden you're treating him like crap. <laughs> don't do that. But treat him as firmly and as fairly as you would any one of your subordinate leaders, and we have to see where it goes from there. He may end up just not being able to deal with this fact. I mean, there's, there's a reason why some people get promoted and some people don't. And maybe he's one of these people that can't humble himself which is one of our biggest fears in somebody that's trying to be a leader is that they can't humble themselves. Yeah. And if that's what's going on, he's gonna have a long, hard road. And you know whose fault it's gonna be? Never his. Never gonna be his fault. It's <laughs> yeah, gonna be everyone yeah. else's fault. And and that's that'll be problematic. Dang. Yeah, it's a tough one right there. 
Yeah, because in his mind, straight up, that like, you're condescending. You don't deserve it. I deserve it. You know, and he's, now you're kind of throwing it arrogant. in my face. Yeah, he's already lacking humility. How's this? One time in football, in it was junior varsity football, and we're suiting up to play a game, right? And my brother Jade, he was, he's really good. So he, you know, you know how you have that one guy, especially in junior varsity, you have the one guy who makes the majority of the touchdowns mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Jade was that guy. So we're suiting up and one of our team guys on the team, he was, he was that guy right there. Mm-hmm. He was, he wasn't, very, the thing is, but he wasn't very valuable. He wasn't very athletic. You, you know, um, and they kind of played the same position. Jade was running back. He was a running back too. I think this guy was a fullback though. I don't know. I forget. Um, anyway, so he goes, he goes to Jade. Oh, time to show off again. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. So you imagine yeah. the mindset. It's yeah. the same. That guy probably has the same kind of mindset. Absolutely. You know? So it's like, man, it's like, you can't, even if you are doing the right things, how you said, like saying everything all cool in his ears, it sounds different. In his ears, you know? it sounds different. Just showing off again. Yep. So, so sometimes when someone isn't going to hear your words correctly, sometimes it's best not to say a damn thing. Oh, yeah. Dang, <laughs> sometimes just keep the mouth shut. And yeah. you ever been in an argument with someone, but you're tr- completely trying to deescalate it yeah. and every single thing you said is getting taken the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. Be quiet, listen, nod your head and yeah. agree. You know, like you're you're not gonna you're not gonna convince someone. You're not gonna get through to them. They're too emotional. This guy's too negative. Yeah. And yeah. everything you say is gonna be heard differently and yeah. not in a positive way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of what you call it opportunity cost of addressing it is just yeah. it's too much. Yeah. Next question. I'm often given tasks on the fly, whereas many of my tasks are given as a result of meetings. These days, an increasing number are coming from emails or my manager or client asking me to do something. I find myself quite disorganized when dealing with this. I'm writing things down when I'm told, but it's all over the place. Post-its, notebook, phone, etc. I don't have a solid method of keeping track of these things. I'm guessing that a possible solution is to write all these things down in the same place, but I've also tried that and didn't really make a difference. I'd appreciate any input or advice you have on how to record and track objectives in a functional and a reliable manner as I'm subjected to a lot of information each day, week, month. I'm definitely overloaded to remember it myself. Discipline equals freedom. So yeah, a few things. First, first of all, definitely write the things down in one place. And it sounds like since you're moving all the time or you're going to meetings, carry just a, a nice little notebook with you and write the things down as you get tasked with them. Then on top of that, you have to have a master list of some kind, either paper or digital. I'm gonna probably recommend digital to track things overall in a prioritized method. So if you get tasked something in a meeting in your little notebook, you come back, you put it in the right place in the master task list. And then like twice a day, to consolidate the information that's in the little notebook you have into the big master list. And then before you go to bed at night, you organize those things by priority on the master list. You put the most important thing at the top and that's what you're gonna attack the next day. That's part one on how you get these things organized. Now the part two is you gotta schedule this stuff. And actually, I always say this, when people have trouble with tasks, Put them on the calendar. You know, actually, Jamie does that for me. Mm-hmm. When Jamie's got something for me to do, she just doesn't email me and say, "Hey, you need to do this." She puts it on the calendar. Mm-hmm. So I look at my calendar. Boom, there it is. I got to go do this, whatever this task is. Done. Mm-hmm. So put these things on your calendar, and that includes scheduling time on your calendar so that you can have time to consolidate your lists and do a review of your lists. Mm. You know, whether that takes, that probably take 15 minutes to do. And I guess there's a bunch of apps you can use and I'm Mm. sure people will make recommendations, but there's a ton of to-do list apps, including there's one, there's native ones on all the different phones. Mm. So you could look at that as a possible, a voice recorder. Mm. You can either use the voice recorder app you have or you can carry around a little mini voice recorder and you can just take notes with that and then you consolidate those notes from your from your voice recorder mm. into your master task list every day and then you just got to prioritize and execute. 
That's it. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Write the stuff down. Put I little. Bo- I, I always. I always put little boxes in front of everything. Yeah. Does it? Does, do you understand? Like when I have a task, I put a little box so in you front check of it, it so I can check it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes. Bro, you're obviously compared to me a master at that. Like all that is like, dang, you can do all that, bro. I'm. I'm on the fly, just like this guy, this person, straight up, like on the fly, and new stuff comes up. Bro, you'd be I'm, surprised. Same boat. You'd be surprised at how much more you could get done. If you actually made a list of things you're supposed to do. How's this? <laughs> How's this? I make a list and I still try I'm trying to nail it down. Right. I'll make a list. I even okay, so I have a book that Jamie gave me, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, a book, a to do list book. <laughs> and then I have She was thing. trying to encourage good I habits think with so. you. And then I have my phone and then I have this. Oh, and then I have just the regular thing on the paper, and then I do this thing where I'll open Word, and have it on my side screen, and I'll put the list there yeah. for the day. It'll just be up, staring yeah, me yeah. in my face. And strangely, that has proven yeah. well, that's good. to be the best one because I'm do I'm and here I see my mistake right now that I'm telling you this. I I put it on on the book that Jamie gave me, right? My to do list. I put it there, and then you don't consolidate your lists. I'm, it's on my, that book. There's one mm. on the on the phone, which is different list. now, by the way. Need a master list. Yeah. There's some apps that make so it doesn't matter if you put it in your phone, if you put it in your computer. I mean, you can, obviously, if it's if, if it's on paper, you need to transpose yeah. it into a digital format. But there's there's things that do that. Yeah, you need to consolidate a list. You need yeah. to have a master list of things that you're trying to do. And then I need to attach myself, as far as the routine goes, to look at that list. You know how like. That's why you schedule it, which is what I just said. That's why you put it on your schedule. Hey, every day when I sit down for lunch, I'm going to do a five-minute review of my list and make sure I'm on track. That gives you the afternoon to catch up on anything you might have missed. And just get rid of my other list. Because half of it is me trying different methods out. (laughs) Right in the middle of carrying out one other method. There's a bad thing about trying different methods trying to combine a bunch of different methods. What you're doing when you do that is you're looking for the easiest way. And I'll tell you the funniest, clearest example of that. When Dean first started fighting and he was going through his various stages of trying to figure out how to cut weight. And he already cut weight. He cut weight in high school as a wrestler. Mm. He knew how to cut weight. But what happened is people would come along and say, hey, there's this trick and there's that trick and there's this trick and there's that trick. And he would try these other, all these little tricks out. Yeah. And he would try them, you, you know, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That's and, exactly and, what I'm doing. Yeah, and that's Holy exactly what, And guess what? You don't, when you try all these different, because what you're really doing is you're looking for the, something that sounds easy, you go, yep, I'll do that. It was the, you know, for Dean, it was like, oh, I'll go, go in the Epsom salt bath in the hot tub. And then it was, oh, you know, and I'll drink just distilled water for X amount of days. And it's all these, which all these things are viable, right? We know that they're viable options, but there's, you have to use them in conjunction. They have to, you have to, you can't just like pull the, pull whatever little yeah. piece you want yeah. and think you're going to be good to go. No, yeah. you've got to do, you got to follow the system. Yeah. Take one and go with it kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is you're looking for things that sound the easiest and that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, right it's in the middle of... what we call of, the easy path. We don't yeah. like the easy path over here. But meanwhile, like, you got three different paths, all effective. Meanwhile, you're jumping from one path yes. to the other, and you're not even getting there. Yes. That's exactly what I'm doing with my to-do list. Don't. I have, like, four to-do lists. <laughs> okay, you need a to-do list that says consolidate all yeah. your to-do lists. That's step number one. Then I got to remember <laughs> that that's the list that I'm checking. Then I got to remember to check it. Because you know how you have... Because you always have that to-do list in your brain. Yeah. You always do, you know, you're like, oh, I got that thing. By the and way, it's on my mind. the one in my brain is real solid. <laughs> what? But like the, 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 the to-do, to-do list in my brain is really, really solid. Yeah. Like I know what I have to do. Yeah. The only, the, the things I have to write down are things that are outside the, yes. outside the, the, the parameters of, of daily situations. Like let's say there's some admin thing that only comes up. Well, if it comes out super rarely, I'll remember it. But if yeah. it's an admin thing that comes up once every quarter, yeah, 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 I, I, I probably won't remember that. It's not, it's not so far outside that I'll remember, it, and it's not in the routine, so I don't remember it. So I got to write that thing down. That's what's on my list. So do you write down the list that's in your head on the on the on the written list? I'll write down the things that I know are are subject 
to being forgotten. Because yeah. Because the other things, I don't forget them. Yeah, so you're just I boom, don't forget them. hard, like confident you're not going to forget If them. I have a, let's say I'm going on a trip of a, con- like if I'm going on a regular trip, mm-hmm. if I'm going to go to a company that I work with and they're in Atlanta and I'm going to fly out there for three days, I, I don't even, I don't even have to think about that. Yeah. Everything that I do is, is the, the work I'm doing, the prep I'm doing, everything I do is just standard. It's a standard operating procedure. Even the, even the things I'm going to bring with me, yeah. it's the same. I went on a one day trip to Vegas the other day, like in and out. I didn't even stay the night. Yeah. And I had the same suitcase that I take when I go on a five day trip. Like yeah. it doesn't matter to me. I'm not changing any standard operating procedures. Yeah. I, I got there and they said, aren't you leaving today? I said, yeah. He said, well, why would you bring a suitcase? This is how I this is how I travel. Yeah, yeah. This is the standard operating procedure for me. Yeah. I'm not deviating from it whether I'm going for one day for like a, a 9 hour trip to Vegas or a 5 day trip to Atlanta. Yeah. Guess what? It doesn't matter. I'm carrying the same thing cuz that's what I do. So, if it's something like that, I don't need to don't even need things some things don't make my list because they're already in my right. head and my they list in my to. head is solid. Yeah. It's things that are outside the bounds of the standard operating procedures. Those are things that'll make the list. Yeah, and that makes sense for this question. This kind of this question because he's getting stuff on the fly. He's getting stuff you on know? the fly. He's got to. He's got to yeah. write this stuff down. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we're all kind of the same way in that way where you're gonna have one, two, maybe three things on your mind that no way I'm gonna forget this, you know, kind yeah. of thing. But man, those lists though, you gotta, you really gotta choose one path and stick with it, and then remember it. That's the thing. I think that's my problem. I know that. Next question. How did you deal with losses in jujitsu? Jujitsu day today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> losses. Assuming in a tournament, right? I just had my first tournament and got the floor wiped with me. Yeah, welcome to jujitsu. Yeah, and that's the, the, uh, <laughs> the obvious thing is you got beat good. You learned. I think we've I think we've I think yeah. we've gone through that one. Yeah. And then really, you know, how did you get beat? What areas were you weak in? Then you analyze and and improve in those areas, and that's jujitsu, right? Yeah. Don't dwell in in don't dwell in your loss, but learn from it and move forward. And actually, speaking of Dave Burke, I was talking to Dave Burke, and he was explaining to me his psychological current status in jujitsu. So he's. However, he's he's basically my age. I'm 46. He might be 45 or something like that. But he's been basically a master of kind of everything he's done. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's like like factually. Yeah. If you look at his life, mm-hmm. he's been Top Gun, Top Gun instructor. He was telling me that during. Operation Southern Watch, which was pre, you know, post first Gulf War, pre 9 11. He was the, he was one of the very, very, very few guys that actually dropped a live bomb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, back in the day when no one had any experience, he was a guy that had really, really done it. Yeah. And, and then he was Top Gun, Top Gun instructor. It, you know, you're just, and then F-35, F-22, just all that stuff that he's done. And he was he was telling me that like if he thinks about it, he gets a little bit bummed out because he's just starting jujitsu right now. And yeah, obviously yeah. it's in his head. Yeah. And he's thinking, oh, well, I'm never gonna reach the highest level that I should or could yeah. if I had started younger. Yeah. And so he, if he, he, it's almost like if he thinks about that too much, it's almost like, well, then I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But, but he immediately was like, of course, I know that I'm going to do it and I'm right. going to be as good as I can. But, you know, that that's that's also the way life is, right? Yeah. Just like when you, how do you deal with losing in life? You learn from your mistakes, you move on, you don't dwell. It's the same thing as jujitsu. You study your weaknesses, you figure out what you can do, you fix those problems, you move forward. You don't yeah. dwell in the past. That's it. Yeah. Those got yeah. beat good. Yeah. I actually put it into perspective even more. Well, okay, so this is just an assumption. I know. I just had my first tournament. I'm assuming white belt, maybe blue belt. Okay. I'm assuming. Yep. You know, I, 
It just doesn't seem like at Brown Belt or something you, you yeah, you're not asking in your first this tournament. question. No, no, no. Or you're you know? not in your first tournament. Yeah, typically. But um, I mean, you never know. But you wouldn't have this in your mind where it'd be mm-hmm. like, how do you deal with loss? You you won't have that in your mind as a Brown Belt. Like, you, sure. know, you know, it's a little bit more clear. Anyway, so unless you this has like scarred you for life, I lost and I'll never compete ever again kind of thing. Um, I think this is. This is a good way to think of it where, you know how it's like, I don't know, your first girlfriend in like junior high or something dumped you. Like at the time, mm-hmm. it seems like, dang, I oh, got yeah, dumped or whatever. And then when you're an adult, you're like, oh, my gosh, God, same thing in jujitsu. That, yeah. So like when you're a white belt and you lost your first, you know, as a white belt and you're, you know, I don't know, a blue belt, pro belt, brown belt, black belt, whatever. And you're thinking about your first tournament. You're like, oh, my gosh, who cares? It doesn't matter at all. Mm-hmm. And. Really, when you kind of put it into perspective, unless you want to dedicate your life to competing, bro, the tournaments don't really mean anything. It's just fun. And if you take the fun out of it by putting everything on that one tournament yeah, you that you're currently do doing, it. bro, you won't want to do it. Yeah. And you'll kind of think that that's kind of what competing is about. And it's not. So if you're, if you lose your first tournament, my first match in my first tournament, I lost. I didn't get the floor wiped with me, but I, that's a common thing. Yeah, you think back on it, and not only do you well, I think you'll always remember the first one, but um, as far as like whether you won or lost, it doesn't matter at all. Totally doesn't matter at all. And you'll find that the more you compete, the less it'll matter. And then jujitsu competition, really, unless you're like really dedicating your 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 life to being a you know a good competitor, um, jujitsu competitions, you're gonna win some and you're gonna learn, yep. lose some. You're and, gonna win them. You're you gonna know, learn. Yeah, and you learn and. You, learn oh my gosh that doesn't work if i don't time it correctly or dang that doesn't work because that's not a real submission i only do it to smaller guys and they tap because it's uncomfortable kind of thing but in turn it doesn't you learn these kind of things you know but it's not even going to matter like dealing with the loss it's not even going to be a factor because you're just going to know that's just part of it and really who cares when you're kind of just starting out you know like if you ask like a top level black belt competitor, mm-hmm. you know, did you win? Ask Hoyler. Okay. Hoyler, right? He tells the story about him and Hoyce they went into their first competition. Their dad said, if you win, I'll give you 10 bucks. If you lose, I'll give you 20. So it takes the pressure off. Like it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, if you lose, boom, you know, it's all good. That's what that was for. And Hoyler lost. Hoist won, Hoyler lost. He got the 20 bucks. And he's like, sure, I would have, you know, had the... Hoyler, one of the greatest legendary guys, lost his first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Puts it in perspective. Puts huh? it in, okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter at all. You got $20. <laughs> You're not always going to get the 20 bucks, but just saying. It, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It won't matter. And you're going to think, same thing like high school, like the stuff that happens in high school, when it happens, it seems like it's a big deal. But then when you're an adult, you're like, uh, it you even know, happens as an adult. It's cool. It's a cool memory, but, you know, could have been better. Anyway, next question. Hello, Mr. Willink. I'm currently deployed to Iraq as an E6 in the Army. I have listened to your podcast and really enjoy your stuff, especially diff- discipline equals freedom. I know as a sergeant and as a leader, your focus isn't to be liked. However, your soldiers should respect you, re- respect both you and your rank. My question is, how do you tell your soldiers to do the small stuff, tedious stuff, like taking out the trash and still be liked? All right. Well, first of all, if we want to get respect from people, we have to give them respect for sure. Think about this. Think if you took out the trash sometime. You know, think if you're the you're the boss, but you see that the trash is getting overfilled, and you just grab it and take it out. Yeah. Just think about what that does. Think about what that does to the attitude of the guys. If you took out the trash, you you maybe in your mind you think you'd be losing respect, but you actually wouldn't be at all. Yeah. In fact, everyone looks at you and goes, "Oh, he's a good guy. He's taking out the trash. It was a little full." And he's taking care of it. So maybe if you're insecure, you'd think you'd lose respect. But I think if you're secure in your ability to lead and if you know that doing some tedious stuff is going to make your guys appreciate you, then to me that means it's kind of worth it. Yeah, fully. <laughs> right? Um, another example, you know, we talk about taking out the trash, but like what if the platoon space has to be cleaned? And on Friday, 
you, you, you just say, hey guys, you guys can go ahead and roll out. I got this. Mm. Right? There's a chance they're like, hey boss, we're not leaving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we, no, we'll, we'll help you. Mm -hmm. there, there's, of course, there's a chance they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Thanks, boss. And they bail. Over time, that might be if, you, if they don't respect you at all, they might bail. Mm. Now, in order to regain the respect, do you make them stay and boss them around more? Does that increase the respect for you? You see, see how interesting it is? Yeah. Instead, if you go, hey, guys, that's cool. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And you're working hard and you still got to maintain the discipline and you don't take any slack. But at the, you, it's the same balance. It's the balance we talk about all the time. So the more that you treat them with respect, the more they're going to respect you and th they're going to know that you're not, you know, too high and mighty. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to know that you're down to earth. When I was a platoon commander, task unit commander, I picked up brass. I cleaned the ranges with the boys. That's just the way I operated. And I would recommend that kind of attitude. It didn't make people think, oh, Jocko was, doesn't have anything better to do. They actually knew I had stuff to do. Mm -hmm. But what do I got to do? Pick up brass with the boys. Yeah. Build the relationships. Set the example. Yeah. They're going to respect you for it. Yeah, makes sense. At the end of the day, do you have something better to do, right? Because the whole in the big picture, it's like how you say, like, that's a leader. Yeah, you know? it, 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 like sometimes you literally have something. <laughs> literally no, 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 like sometimes you literally <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, hey, the sense. boys are picking up brass and, and guess what? You got a meeting with the commanding officer. You got to right. go do, you know, there's sometimes we you actually do. Yeah, yeah. And what's cool is tactically is, and you heard us saying this at the uh, FTX when we were up in Utah, if you see the leader doing something menial, what you should do as a, as a follower is step up and say, hey, Echo, I got this. You can go and lead. Yeah. That's, what, that's what you want. That's what I want to do for my leader. I want to take things off my leader's plate as much as possible. Yeah. Now, the more you try and, you, you just have to build those relationships. The way you build those, if you don't have anything better to do, then you get down there and you help, you help clean up the range. You help pick up the brass. Yeah. That's I, the way it is. I actually did notice that about you and Leif too, um, where, you know, like I'll have my camera equipment and, you know, lights or whatever. And it's not a bunch of stuff, but you know, you're always like, oh, you'll like grab something. Yeah. And you don't like it if, when I grab if, your camera. Yeah. Equipment. Don't touch. <laughs> don't don't touch it. Don't touch it. But and, and when it's just me and you, it's kind of like cool because we're just kind of friends or whatever. There's no perceived or no like hierarchy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you know. But let's say like at the muster or whatever. It's obvious. Like you guys have a, a specific job. I have a specific job. You know, kind of thing. And meanwhile, you and and Leif will like if if i'm around i'm carrying something you'll always like grab something or or say hey you need you know even yeah. at, the, at the utah thing yeah. it's like oh are you good i'm like bro you're the instructor here kind of thing <laughs> that's what i'm thinking in my head and um and yeah you guys always offer to like help well interesting yeah. i'm like almost offended like bro like do i look like i need help because you shouldn't really be asking me for kind help. Of. <laughs> <laughs> whatever bro very capable individual yeah, and the small, tedious stuff. The other thing is you explain to them why it's important, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. answer we give all the time. Why is it important? Why is it important that the platoon hut's clean? Well, because I want you guys to have time off over the weekends and not be stuck here cleaning because the commanding officer came in and saw that this place looked like a hellhole. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense to us. Yeah. We understand why you want us to clean now. You You want us to clean so that we can have time off you want us to clean so you want us to train hard you want us to do this because because we want to be ready for combat because i want you guys to be able to come home to your families mm. make sure they understand why they're doing what they're doing and if there's no reason why to if, if if the reason i mean even cleaning even taking out the trash there's a reason for that right there's an actual yeah. reason for that we can't just have junk everywhere so yeah. explain why participate when you can build the relationships with your troops You'll be good. Yeah, that that works. For, and kids. by the way, thanks for your service, brother. I hope you're having a, a good time over in Iraq getting after it. Yeah, second that for sure. That works for kids big time, explaining why you do it. And if you really want to dial in the effectiveness is make that reason somehow tie it to their interests. 
their direct interest because sometimes kids can't see the big picture you know like if i say hey, you got to clean your room and you know otherwise your room would be messy and then maybe you know um later in life you might be comfortable with a messy room might get in the way of your effectiveness a little four or five year olds they're not gonna understand that they're gonna be like cool that sounds like terrible but they won't feel it yeah, you know works. but if you tie it into their like direct interests as a four or five year old or however old the kid is it works really good what if you don't clean your room and there's a fire and i come in here to get you but i trip and fall down and then you die <laughs> 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 yeah that's one way yeah yeah for sure all right yeah i don't know if i'd say that but it's cool good time for one more here yeah i think so jocko in war the enemy is clear but in life in business not so easy to identify any tips well um, I mean, first of all, that is not a true statement. And in in war, the enemy is not always clear. Not at all. The enemy, the enemy can be hard to identify. Very hard to identify. The enemy is going to use camouflage to conceal themselves. They're going to use deception to to distract your attention. They're going to blend in with the friendly civilian populace and they're going to take advantage of your benevolence, right? In fact, the enemy is going to do absolutely everything in its power to obscure their position, to hide their purpose, to even mask their identity. So it is not easy to identify the enemy in combat. In war so what you have to do is you have to control what you can control <laughs> right you got to be prepared you've got to train you've got to study you've got to rehearse you've got to remain vigilant you've got to maintain discipline in everything you do so that when the enemy does reveal itself you have the ability to outthink it to out maneuver to out fight the enemy and it's actually the same thing in business, right? The enemy can be hard to identify. Your competitors aren't broadcasting their next move. You don't know what the market's gonna do. You can't be certain about the next trend or the next downturn or the next bubble that's gonna burst. You can't know those things. So you have to do the same thing. You have to control what you can control, which is you. You gotta gather intelligence. You gotta analyze the metrics that you can track you got to train yourself and your team to be prepared for both the known and also be prepared for the unknown figure out what the likely contingencies are and have some plans to execute if those contingencies occur maintain discipline as an organization so that you have the flexibility and the responsiveness to maneuver effectively and efficiently when the unpredictable actually happens so instead of suffering and falling apart in the chaos you can take advantage of it and win and that's business and life is the same the enemy is not always clear in life it can be hard to tell who's going to try and bring you down or what is going to bring you down there's distractions there are things out there that will do you harm that are so camouflaged you can't see them at all there are deceitful people there are accidents that can occur and diseases that take root and there's bad luck and there's Murphy's Law and there's times when it seems that the whole world is against you. The whole world is the enemy. And the same rules apply. Control what you can control you. Train hard, learn, maintain the unmitigated daily discipline in all things. 
train hard physically and mentally. Push yourself so hard that you become accustomed to the stress. You get used to it. Every day, make yourself stronger and faster and smarter and better so that when the enemy does finally climb out of the shadows and expose himself to you, you are ready. You are waiting. And you can relish in the opportunity to attack and fight and utterly decimate and destroy him. And I think that's all I've got for tonight. So, Echo, maybe you could help us figure out how we can support ourselves and perhaps be better prepared sure. for the enemy yeah. of whichever kind and whenever it exposes itself so that we can smash it. And if you want to do that, you can also do that while simultaneously supporting this podcast. If they want to, of course. Or we could just have a bunch of advertisers on here. <laughs> you could listen to us talk about stuff that... Sure. Yeah. Yeah, either way. Hey, that's what I'm here to do. One of the things I was talking to... Um, actually, that's that's true that where... You know how... You know, you say that a lot and it's easy, especially me. I what do I say a lot? Like, be ready, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Prepare. Yeah. Be stronger, Prepare. faster, smarter. And you don't like a lot of things after a while. You hear it like enough. A lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times. Sometimes it clicks, but then every once in a while, you'll, it'll like. Leave a mark. No, no, no. The opposite. Sorry. The, oh. it, the opposite. Like, um, okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, get I, get I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Next kind of thing. Yeah. And these things, like when you really think about that one, like we, there was this saying, I don't know, I'm sure it's not new when I heard it, it was like chance favors the prepared man. Is that the correct Fortune one? favors the brave. Wait, wait, what are you looking for? That that quote. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's like basically some chance favor. The, the one that I heard was chance favors the prepared man. Yeah, for sure. Right? So yeah. it's all, it's all There's the same There's some thing. variations of that one. Yeah. I went straight to the fortune favors the bold or brave. Yeah. Um, well, it's the yeah. prepared, right? Yeah. So if you're yeah, prepared, yep. you know, you're going to seem to have more luck, exactly. you know, with victory and all this other stuff, right? So it's like, you know, in any circumstance, like if you take working out, working out is like the easy one because like if you're in shape or you're, if you're strong or if you're not weak or if you're not incapable, you know, like you don't work out so your back's out or something like that or compare it with being strong being strong is always more beneficial in pretty much every single situation <laughs> there weak. is than being weak yes true or being in shape or or you know being healthy mm -hmm. being smarter You're being smarter yeah yeah well, I guess well, so. well you hesitate a bit it's, it's always good to be strong but occasionally it's good to be dumber <laughs> no i'm not saying it's not one of the it's it's one of those things where 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 the result of working out and being strong is always going to add a tangible benefit to most it's pretty much everything you do yeah. in life and you don't you believe know? that about being smarter uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that i'm not just going to jump into yes that's true too because i didn't think about it i, I okay. thought about this well, but it's I'm a not smart saying move of I'm yours not, <laughs> see there you go boom Nonetheless, but I think that's one of those things where we kind of, it's my opinion that what you just said there is, should be taken to heart. hundred percent. Concur. Yeah. <laughs> Not just some cool thing. Like, let's face it. That sounded good. That sounded cool. But well, in I'm there, here. I don't, I'm, I don't listen to it because I'm saying it. Yeah. I thought it sounded dope. Oh, okay. But it's, cool. it's absolutely true. And, you know, and there's little micro struggles, you know, in life. <laughs> Let's face it. I know you have some micro struggles. I was a lot of micro struggles. They're way micro. All my struggles are micro. <laughs> <laughs> Seemingly. But guess what? No problem, you know. No factor. No factor. I was filling up jugs. And I use this example before. Again? I'm going to do it again. You know why? Because it's it. every time I fill up jugs, I think about this. The struggle is real. Water jugs. <laughs> They're like, what, 40 pounds, right? I think like... Uh, it's like seven pounds. How many gallons are they? I think it's are they? eight pounds per gallon. Right? Seven. Seven, yeah. okay. So they're five gallons each. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's, you know, but no problem. You know, no I can do it. No, I don't need a cart to carry him, you know, kind of thing. How many do you carry? Just one in each arm? No, yeah, one in each hand. <laughs> see, what it, see what I'm saying? They'll see how you're like, that's nothing, right? Yeah, that's nothing. Like but that. for a lot exactly. of people who don't work out or nothing like that, that's not nothing. It's something. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nonetheless, uh, I'm just saying, like, if you're prepared. Okay, so tell us how we can, can prepare less better. Struggles. Yeah, okay. So first Quickly. thing you do is maintain maintain your your what do you call it your 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 structure foundational structure foundational structure make sure you're not breaking down starting with your joints as always say chocolate has some supplements krill oil and glucosamine and chondroitin supplements jocko super krill it's krill oil and what's called joint warfare Jocko joint warfare. That's glucosamine conjoint and some other good stuff for your joints. It's funny. The other stuff is actually really beneficial. So go to originmain.com and read so that you can realize the benefits that you're getting because it's good for you. Yeah. And I'll go beyond just good for you. It's the kind where, and I'm saying this firsthand, firsthand account, my account. Before you take this, you, you're going to have joint pain and even non-factor joint pain. I was talking to Dave Burke the other day. Dave Burke's popular today. Yeah. yeah. So Dave Burke asked me about krill oil, just in general. He's like, well, I don't have joint pain. Like most of the workouts and he hard workouts it, I do. He? See, and that's the thing. So I was like, I was kind of like that too, where I didn't know. And I don't want to be the guy who's like, no, you do have this problem. Mm-hmm. And they're like, bro, I don't have this problem. No, no, you do. And you need this product. You know, I don't, I'm not, I, I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to come off like that guy. So I'm like, yeah. You'll save coming off like that for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, he made a good point. If you don't have like joint pain or, or whatever, um, then yeah, you won't have the exact experience I did because I did have joint pain and I had joint pain in places that I didn't kind of realize it. You just feel like, oh, dude, dang, I'm you like, you think just that's just normal. Better. That's your baseline. Yeah, you get used to the pain. On top of the fact that I had pain that I didn't, I, that I knew wasn't normal, you know, just more stiff now that I'm getting older, whatever. But nonetheless, I was like, you're looking old. I think, bro, how do I look cool? You know, it's just my in birthday general. in two days, by the way. Dang. Boom. Anyway, sure, you could not have joint pain. But the, even before I had like any kind of pain from working out or whatever from joint or in my joints or whatever, I should have started taking it before that. I should have. And yeah. I'm not saying people will take it or what. I'm not saying that necessarily. Um, so Dave's question to me was, should I start taking it? I said, yes. Yeah. 100%. It's good advice. But I did have to let him know. If you legitimately are not having joint pain, don't think that it's going to be a miracle thing like it felt like for me. That's the point. Nonetheless, it's the best stuff because it's from Jocko, right? Yeah. Well, it's the best stuff because it's the best stuff. Yeah. It happens to be. It happens to be. Anyway, go to originmain.com for this super krill oil and Jocko joint warfare. On the top says labs. I always see that. It's on the front, too, so yeah. it's real obvious. Just go there, originmain.com. There's also some geese. If you're still wondering about what ghee to get, don't wonder anymore. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. And There's actually there's actually no comparison, to yeah. be quite honest with you. There's no comparison. Yeah. Every yeah. other ghee is not made here in America yeah. with American hands, American material. Yeah. So there's no compare. You can't compare. Yeah. You, can, you literally can't compare. There's no comparison. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to turn this into like, you know, putting down any other gee company. So I'm not necessarily going to do that. But let's face it. In certain manufacturing industries, mm-hmm. I guess, brands, a lot of brands, they go, they all go to the same supplier in Pakistan well, yeah, they or all come, wherever. All the things come from the same place. Yes. And that's why I said there's actually no comparison. Yeah. And it's not just no comparison because it's made in America. It's it's no comparison because it's been designed yeah. from the ground up, up yes. by people that do jujitsu. 
Yes. By people that do jujitsu on the daily at Origin, the factory, the, you know what the next building is? The Origin training facility. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. it's like we're going to put on our geese and train, and then we're going to make sure that it's squared away. Yeah. From the material. By the way, it's not like, oh, well, we want it to look like this, and we'll just have to use some random material. No. Yeah. We'll design the material, yeah. design the weave of the material. Yes. And yeah. so that it's optimum for jujitsu, and that's what we'll make and sell. So there's yeah. no comparison. Yeah. And he was like, There's no one else doing anything close to that. Yeah. The closest would be, hey, we're, we're making it look, we're putting a color to it or putting a patch somewhere. Or, you know, that's the closest you could do to saying we're doing something like this. Yeah. No one's designing from the ground up. Yeah. From the material up, from the threads themselves. Yeah. The typical scenario. And by the way, it's not just the geese, the rash guards, same thing. Yeah. The material created. By origin. Yeah. Yeah. The typical scenarios you get, you know, hey, I'm gonna, and you'd be surprised, man. Even these like kind of established gi brands, like so I'm, doesn't matter which ones or whatever, but they'll be like, hey, yeah, let's do, you know, let's yeah. make this gi. Oh, by the way, let's get the same blanks same that blanks we've everybody else. always been getting and that everyone else. And let's just put a, a cool stitch on there or something or patch or, or design. That's just the way it typically works. Not even necessarily that there's anything wrong with it. Because if you like your gi, you like your gi. That's good. That's how I am. But yeah, the origin, once you kind of put it on, I will argue that you're, you're going to kind of understand. It's my opinion. Nonetheless, originmain.com. That's the, that's the good one. Also, for legit fitness gear, go to onit.com slash Jocko. Good kettlebells on there. They got some Star Wars kettlebells. That's cool. Yeah, see, Whatever. that's the thing, man. You don't really care that much nope, about these these cool kettlebells. I'm I to do. Be nice about it. I do. I think they're dope. Nonetheless, um, yeah, kettlebells on there. I got into kettlebells a while ago. Very glad I did. Wish I had done it earlier. Did I get you into kettlebells? Yeah. <laughs> I got you into krill oil and kettlebells. Yeah. Right there. Give it up. But <laughs> both, yeah, both not necess- not actively. You and I got you into did. metcons too. Metcons. Yeah, you used to not do metcons. I remember you sent me a text sometime. Like it was like, "What's the deal with this this metabolic conditioning?" Yeah. You said, "What should I do?" And I just like said, and, you, and then all of a sudden you started doing metcons, and your cardio on the mat got a lot better. Yeah, yeah, quick too. By the way, yeah, metcons, metcons with kettlebells and krill oil. Ooh, it's that's combo. the combo right there. Anyway, yeah. and there's a lot of cool other exercise stuff on there, like create, kind of create more creative stuff. Um, you know, keep your workouts interesting. That is on it.com slash Jocko. Check out some stuff on there. They got some really good stuff. Really good stuff. Audrey's, Aubrey's smart with that, where he's always like pushing like the good stuff, you know. Anyway, also, Jocko has a store. It's called Jocko Store. JockoStore.com. It has, if you want to get these shirts... That we make, that we happen to make. They're good shirts too. They're not like free shirts. You know, the free ones that you like, cool, and you never wear. And it's not that kind. Very wearable. I made it a point to make them like good. Anyway, some women's stuff on there. Rash guards. Patches. Hoodies. I know it's getting colder now. Places. Um, they're thicker hoodies. Is it cold in the Kauai right now? It is. <laughs> Actually, it is. It's like 60. There's snow on the top of Kauai, right? No, not Kauai. That's oh, the big that's island. the big island. Yeah. Dang it. Mauna Kea. I just revealed my... Not everyone knows Non-Hawaiian. That. That's all right, bro. You're Kamaina to me. That's a man. Cool. I might have to suspend your my Kauai card for a little while, though, after <laughs> that one. <laughs> anyway, we got some hoodies for people who are in places other than Hawaii. Or if you're on Mauna Kea. Thicker hoodies. All this stuff. Anyway, I'm not saying buy stuff. I'm saying go on there, check it out. If you like something, get something. It's a good way to support. Also, subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play. However, you listen to the podcast, you subscribe. Seems obvious, I know, but if you haven't subscribe, good way to support. Also on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel. There's various reasons to subscribe to YouTube, but the main one, I think, main two is if you like the video version of this podcast. And you like little excerpts, whether we put some music behind them 
When I say we, I mean me. <laughs> Put some music behind them and some various effects. Or not, there's excerpts, you know, a little shorter than the whole version of the podcast. And you can share them, and listen to them, or whatever. A lot quicker. Anyway, subscribe to YouTube is what I'm saying, if you want. And if you do want to, and you do, it's a good way to support. Also, Psychological Warfare. If you don't know what that is, it's an album on iTunes that you can get with tracks <laughs> that on your campaign against weakness, on the path, trying to get in better shape, you're trying to get in shape, you want to maintain your shape, you want to, what, wake up earlier. I think you covered it, dude. No, 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 no. <laughs> These are the, I'm saying, you know, but here's the thing, because, it, it, cause, okay, so it seems obvious, right? You're trying to get in shape. You're going to have hard days, you know, days where you're like, I'm going to skip the workout, right? No. It seems <laughs> obvious. That's an element of life on the path. That's, it seems obvious you'll run into like points of weakness. That's obvious. And I dig it. And there's a track for that. Jocko tells you why you shouldn't do that. You just listen to it. Boom. Get right back on track. But I don't always, what I don't always talk about is that there's tracks for other things. Like the creativity thing. Like if you got like a procrastination situation. How's that one? The reason you're looking at me like this is because you already know this, but not everybody knows this. You're procrastinating me finishing this podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> we are finishing this podcast strong with boatloads of value. Because I'm Debatable. letting people know. I'm letting people know. This is what Why it is. Why don't you just say Psychological Warfare. It's an album with tracks on iTunes, MP3, Google Play, Amazon Music. If you're going to run into some issues, it'll help you out getting through those issues. Next topic. Yeah. I guess I could have said it like that. <laughs> That's more of like the Jocko way to say it. You know, like I don't, I, I feel like if I come from a place of, you know, authentic relation to the struggle, I feel like it'll, it'll, it'll pass the message in a more accurate way. I think. Okay. You don't skip workouts. True. You do you okay? Here's this. How's this? Do you ever sit in your gym, sit on the bench or whatever, or the bike and be like, man, if I and make deals with yourself, no. hey, if I skip today, I, yeah, I'll I, just do it double tomorrow. I'll tell you what I, I'll do is like if I'm doing something that's gonna suck, like squats. Yeah, I'll I'll. I'll 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 put I'll procrastinate. I'm in oh. the gym. Like it's gonna happen. Okay, but I'll like okay. Let me just stretch out my back. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. But it's it's sure. one of those things. Like the outcome is known. Yeah, yeah. The outcome is not in question. Okay. The so, workout will happen. Okay. I'm just being a complete baby about it. Okay. So then I just have to suck it up. So, yeah. So see, that's why you're looking at me like that. Because me. And a lot of people like me, we're not like that. We're trying to be like that. We want to be like that. I know I do. I want to be like skipping the workout is straight up a non, not an option ever. I want skipping to, the I workout's want, a total violation. I want to be like that. <laughs> you won't let it happen. But there are times and have been times where I'm sitting there. Got my. There's been times I drove to the gym before I got my own gym. Drove to the gym, sat in there, and was like, That's you know ridiculous. what? If I, it, look, if I just walk right out of here right now. I skip this workout. I need, gonna, I, I need recovery. I need recovery. I'm not going to yeah. get a good workout anyway. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll just come back in on Saturday. That was my active rest. I'll come back in and I'll get it then. Today will be my rest day, right? I'm like that. Some other people are like that. You're not like that. That's no. why you don't understand. You know what I'm doing the, right now? With them shuffling my papers? Being passive aggressive. Being I know. Passive which, aggressive. which is very <laughs> unlike you. But, you know, hey, man, it's all good. Nonetheless, psychological warfare. I'm trying to make, make this a point. This is a for real point. Valuable point. There's a track that Jocko, kinda, even though he tried to talk me out of explaining this to you right now, oh, God. he will talk you out to out of, effectively, talk you out of skipping the, wor skipping the workout. Talk you out of pressing the snooze or whatever all these little points of weakness go on there just if you look at them you'll see all the little points of weakness that you, that these tracks address it's good very effective cool are we done with that section very good way to support <laughs> podcast too all right jocko white tea you can get that on amazon it will guaranteed 
100% double blind placebo tested. <laughs> triple blind. Triple blind. Uh, you can deadlift 8,000 pounds, so you might want to pick that up on Amazon. You can read the, if you don't believe me, that's fine. Go read the go read the reviews on Amazon where every verified purchase is like they're deadlifting minimum 8,000 pounds. Books, got some books. Weigh the Warrior Kid. If you have a kid or you know a kid, then help a kid. Help them be a better person and have a better life. Get them the way of the warrior kid. Extreme Ownership, the new edition is out and you all helped write it because it has questions from this podcast. Also the new forward. Also the color pictures. Lame. Didn't want them. But made up for that by just making the cover black because black. And... That book has all the fundamental principles of combat leadership. It's for you and your team. You don't need to hide it. Remember in the beginning, people would want it. They'd get it and they'd want to keep yeah. it for themselves because the they, yeah. they want to hide the knowledge because they want to look. They want that. Don't do that. Mm. It doesn't help. The more people know it, the more people are on board, the better it's going to work. Also, from an individual perspective, to get yourself on the path, there's a book called Discipline Equals Freedom Field Manual. It's available everywhere. And you might be wondering if it'd make a good gift. <laughs> well, not only is it heavy, have you noticed how heavy it is? It's a heavy book. It's a big book. It's a substantial book. It's completely unique because it has black pages and the outside of the pages are also black. It's a work of art, for sure. So get some copies for the people that you know because beyond looking really cool there is no better gift than discipline <laughs> so get some copies and also if you want the audio version see now look I'm doing the same thing you just did but let's watch how long this takes mm. if you want the audio version of discipline equals freedom field manual you can get it on iTunes Amazon music Google Play and other mp3 platforms period right there now everyone knows what you took 15 minutes to explain <laughs> if you're okay. in further need of more fire support in terms of basic leadership besides the pod podcast beside the books and you want to have more interaction Take it to the next level. We have a leadership consulting company. It's me. It's Leif Babin. It's JP Donnell. It's Dave Burke. You can email info at echelonfront.com. And if you have questions for us or you have answers or you have directions or you want to share something, you can hit us up on the interwebs, Twitter, Instagram, and a five shot. Okay. Echo is at Echo Charles and I am at Jocko Willink and thanks to those people out there that give us the freedom and protection to make this podcast possible our service men and women in uniform protecting us from the enemy and fighting the good fight thank you and to the police and law enforcement and firefighters and paramedics and the rest of the first responders out there thank you for answering the call when we call and to everyone out there, there's an enemy. And whether that is a literal enemy, like our military personnel face, or a metaphorical enemy like people face every day, don't fear the enemy. Respect the enemy. And out of your respect for the enemy, prepare. Prepare and train and learn and stay vigilant and stay disciplined so when the enemy comes you are ready to get after it and until next time this is echo and jocko out